Welcome to this short introduction to numeracy matters and the role of parents in honour of World Maths Day. My name is Rachel Vett, I'm a former primary school teacher and 22 years ago founded Educating Matters to support parents with all aspects of educating, raising children and integrating work and family. I draw on my experience as a mother of four children, having taught many hundreds of children and supported tens of thousands of parents all over the world. Research clearly shows that family support is undoubtedly one of the most powerful forces to strengthen children's academic potential. Being in a home that feels supportive, safe and secure is crucial. But it is not easy to combine the role of parent and maths teacher, and particularly for me as a former teacher. The number one priority at the forefront of your mind always needs to be having a strong relationship and connection above everything else. On a superficial level, it feels much easier for parents to support their children with something like reading. Each night, a book is sent home, and perhaps a parent's role is a little more clear and obvious. Even when parents are doing their very best to help, this can end in frustration and tears especially when the parent is explaining things in a different way to the teacher. The child shouts in desperation, that's not how my teacher does it at school. So let's explore the role parents play when it comes to supporting their children with numeracy. I always say parents are a child's first and most important teacher. No teacher, no matter how dedicated, is going to care as much about a child's progress as a parent does. You are the constant in their lives. You can notice progress and patterns if things aren't going well. Something you can do in a much more realistic, authentic way than in school is enable your children to see how numeracy applies to everyday life. Rather than having the attitude that maths is hard, but you can give it up at 16 or 18 if Rishi Sunak's plans come to fruition, let your children see how you use maths in everyday life. Really take advantage of the home context. With a toddler, every time you walk up and down the stairs, count the steps. For example, when you're on holiday, work out the exchange rate. If you're buying plates for a birthday party and they come in packets of six, how many do you need for 30 children coming to the party? Cooking involves weighing and measuring, doubling and halving ingredients. Learning area to measure up for carpet, 40% off a pair of jeans in the shop. Brainstorm what you use maths for during the day. Research clearly shows that when parents believe their children can learn challenging material and set high but realistic expectations, they rise to the occasion. It's a bit like Henry Ford who said, if you think you can or you think you can't, then you are right. If they lack confidence, they don't persist. I noticed through teaching hundreds of other people's children and raising my own four, that attitude underpins everything. Parents play a vital role in helping their children to feel confident and develop a positive attitude towards maths. It's not really helpful to say, oh, I was never good at maths when I was at school or I didn't like it either. But I do tell my children that I remember finding it really difficult at times. Children often have this mistaken belief, especially with maths, that it's something you're just born being good at. Many of you may be familiar with Carol Dweck's concept of a growth or a fixed mindset. And I have seen that playing out a lot in relation to maths. Children with a fixed mindset have the attitude they are never going to be good at maths. So what is the point of trying? Perhaps they are more linguistic or creative. The mm. comments that parents and teachers make really contribute to children's view of themselves and their ability. Especially in relation to maths, there is a very powerful three-letter word, Y-E-T. 
when a child is getting upset and frustrated and saying they can't do it, you could say, maybe you can't do it yet. I can see you're finding division difficult and it feels like you can't do it. You just can't do it yet. That does not mean, with a bit more help and practice, that you will never to be, be able to do it. To foster more of a growth mindset, talk about the attitude, process and strategies you notice your child using, rather than just focusing on the end result and getting 100%. For instance, you could say, I noticed today you had a go at doing your homework by yourself before coming to ask me. If they get full marks in their mental arithmetic test, rather than saying, amazing, you're brilliant at maths, you could say, I bet that's because instead of leaving it until breakfast on the day of the test, you practice four times during the week. And if you want to get something stuck in your head, you need to go over it quite a few times. You are commenting and specifically reinforcing what they did well so they can repeat it next time. There are certain skills at primary school that are really helpful to be familiar with, such as times tables or number bonds. This is knowing all the different totals that are, add up to 10, such as seven and three or four and six. And instilling these at home is hugely beneficial. Personally, I don't think it's your job to take it upon yourself to teach your children new concepts from scratch, but to reinforce the learning taking place in school. For instance, it's Sunday afternoon. <laughs> You're not going to say it's Sunday afternoon and it's time for you to learn how to convert um, decimals into fractions. Most primary schools inform parents on a weekly basis what topics are being covered in various subjects. So your job is more about reinforcing what they are already learning. There are some exceptions. So if your child really is gifted and talented at maths, they may need stretching and you could work with the school to determine how best to achieve that. Or you may have a child at the other end of the spectrum really struggling and they need further support with some fundamental concepts. Working in partnership with the school is the most effective way to get the best outcomes for your child. It's really important to understand the school policy and approach to teaching numeracy. So for example, what methods are they using to teach concepts? How much do they expect you to get involved in your child's homework? Now this might be really obvious, but it's important to remind you, homework is for children and not for you. I remember years ago doing a talk in a big auditorium at JP Morgan. A dad put up his hand and said, I was up at five o'clock this morning doing my son's math homework. And I said, where was your son? And he replied, he was fast asleep. Now, <laughs> with young children, they may be set something like a mass investigation at the weekend, such as finding different shapes in the kitchen. But the majority of the time, especially when it comes to maths, the teacher wants to know what the child can do. Most math homework should be a way to reinforce and check a child's understanding of something already covered in school. If the child clearly doesn't understand, the teacher needs to know that rather than you spending hours trying to explain it at home, otherwise they just think it's all sorted and it's sunk in. For further tips and guidance, you can follow me on LinkedIn subscribe to our newsletter, have a look at various articles and videos on the blog section of the website. And we also offer an online self-study parenting course, sharing all the top strategies you need to raise a child to thrive.